Hey, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Today, I'm going to just quickly go over geriatric abuse and neglect and some things you can look out for because, you know, ger- geriatric abuse is really considered a syndrome, um, and it's a big problem in our society, actually. And just like child abuse and neglect, it is actually defined as a syndrome. And this is where an elderly person is receiving serious physical or psychological injury from their uh, children or maybe even another uh, health care provider, so maybe a, a, a home health aide or a nursing home worker or something like that. It's important to know that, you know, really there's no social or economic boundaries in this. It doesn't really matter how much money or how much or how little somebody makes or uh, what their uh, situation, their environment is. There's really no known bounds for this abuse. And it actually often occurs a lot more when that older person is not really able to uh, be totally independent any longer. You know, the families have a difficulty upholding the commitment to care for them. Um, and it can also occur in places like nursing homes. Um, it can occur in uh, other healthcare facilities, like long-term facilities, things like that. And again, maybe even healthcare providers like uh, home health aides and things like that. So, actually, the the profile of a potential person that might be abusing a geriatric patient might really show a great deal of stress in their life at the time. Um, they might even have sleep sleep deprivation, have marital problems, financial problems, work-related problems, and as that person's life gets more and more in disarray and the more problems that they have, they have, uh, you know, the tendency for that abuse and the abuse might be, end up being the outcome of what happens to these patients. So what are some things you can look for? Well, look for um, some obvious things, okay? A lot of times the symptoms of this abuse or the neglect are going to be obvious. Unexplained trauma is usually the primary presentation you're going to see. The average abused patient usually is older than 80 years old, might have multiple medical problems, things like cancer, uh, congestive heart failure, heart disease, maybe even incontinence. Um, you're going to have uh, maybe even some dementia you might see as well. And one thing to know that sometimes it could be hard to determine whether that dementia is a chronic issue or acute, especially if you have that unexplained trauma where it might have a likelihood of head trauma from that abuse. So if you suspect abuse, um, best thing to do, go ahead and get the complete patient and family history. Try to pay attention to those inconsistencies in the stories and in the history. Do not confront the family or the person you're thinking that might be doing the abuse. Instead, make sure you go ahead, report your suspicions appropriately to the emergency department. Um, maybe you have a, some type of reporting system in place in your state, such as some type of some type of an appropriate governmental type authority to go ahead and and, and report your suspicions to. Just remember that. A lot of states um, have uh, their own uh, laws set up to protect these patients, just like child abuse, and you have a reporting system in place. So make sure you follow that reporting system. Um, And uh, a lot of times, too, if you don't report it, that's just as much of a crime as the person doing the abuse. So keep that in mind. Know your law and your state and what your guidelines and your EMS agency are for when you suspect this type of abuse. All right, guys, real quick, um, again, nothing, uh, you know, I want to just get this out there to you guys. We talked about this last night on the EMS Office Hours podcast a little bit and talked about a situation that happened uh, with reporting and lack of feedback on the reporting and what was expected and whatnot. And I just thought it was a good idea to maybe pop in here on these Monday Minutes today and just go over a little bit of some things to look out for and kind of hit home a little bit too on what your responsibilities are. You are responsible and you should report the, your suspicions, but don't confront anybody. Don't try to confront the family or the caregiver because that just might make things worse and might get you in a situation where you can't get out of yourself, put yourself or maybe even your partner in danger by doing that as well. So be sure to check out emfoversowers.com. Listen to some of the previous Monday Minutes over there. And you can also listen to the recorded 
uh, versions of the live podcast that we do every Sunday at 7 p.m. and uh, talk about a bunch of great EMS topics. So go check out EMS12Salvers.com, listen to some of the previous podcasts over there, and please, by all means, leave some comments in the blog over there and let us know what you think about the podcast that we do. And send me your ideas for podcasts, your ideas for some Monday Minutes, over to Hoffman at ems-safety.com. And until next week, as always, this is Jim Hoffman from EMS Office Hours. Stay safe.